welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. You came ripping into that parking lot. Yeah, I really came around that corner a bit vicious. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't apologize to me. It's Did all you, good. Did uh, you, like... I'm sure you see some crazy shit on the road, but there was just, there's a story that broke today about a guy on the Trans Canada outside, just at west of Calgary. Yeah. So that stretch before it turns to, it goes to 100 at Canmore. Is that right where the, it goes down to 100 from well, 110? Uh, isn't it once you enter the right park? Right past the yeah. Is it just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway, so he was in the 110 area. Yeah. How fast do you think they clocked him? A guy from Kelowna in a Porsche. Oh, 160 men. Uh, I'm going to go higher just for fun. <laughs> 183. 270 oh. oh i mean that's a good time like i'm sure you've probably traveled that stretch and that like uh, uh, there's White always cops there all, they, hey? uh, like there's uh, you know not to speed on that stretch there's, but that I guess car the car is meant to do that i guess thought he's in germany or something so don't worry you ripped around here that's fine that yeah was, you're good you're not good. like Kelowna. Gee, <laughs> <it is. laughs> um well welcome to bo's bar and stage for not the first time right no probably the third now third i think I know. You're a seasoned vet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you're having fun on tour so far? We're having a great time. Yeah. yeah had a little day off yesterday, a little recoup, and now At we're... home? Yeah, back in Edmonton. Oh, so that's that was amazing. Nice. Yeah, so now we're uh, we're back at it. Yeah, absolutely. And and no hiccups so far? No, I mean, no more than usual. You had to get a new uh, vehicle, though, right? No, I ended up renting something that oh, okay. from a guy in Saskatchewan that did me okay. But I, I am looking for a passenger van, which are in hard, uh, yeah. which are hard to man, hard to find right now. So I feel yeah. like there's an opportunity there for a business, right? I think they all know that too. The rentals have just been cranked right up. Yeah, and nobody's I, selling them, so I had to do some things, but we got it. It's funny because we had Boy Golden here a few months ago, oh, and he uh, last year or earlier this year rolled his uh, what is a Privia? Yeah, I think that's what it was. It was a Privia, yeah. And yeah. uh, <laughs> had to get a new, like, like full on, like rolled it, oh. like it was, it was a, a goner. And um, but he came here to buy something, didn't he? I don't know where he bought something, but he bought, he bought a nice. Yeah, nice he bought van. a Transit, I think, because yeah. I, I remember him saying he was coming to Alberta to buy. So, <laughs> I'm sure that's on my list, but not quite yet. Well, how many more? Like, are you halfway through the tour, or just about? Pretty well for the Canadian dates. Yeah, we're. We got tonight, couple days off, and then Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and then couple dates in Ontario, uh, and then one in Edmonton. So yeah, we're about halfway. Man. And so Edmonton's home base now. It is, yeah. So how long have you been out of Calgary? It's two and a half years. And how's that transition gone from honestly, one hated city to another? Do you I kind of love it. Yeah. Like, honestly, yeah, Edmonton's got a vibe to it that that works with me pretty well. Yeah. It's like low key, good people, good beers, well, very chill. The- Less white collar. I was just yeah. going to say, not to get into too 100%. much of a battle of Alberta kind of no, thing, but no. I just, I do find uh, Edmonton a little bit more of an entertain or like artsy, you know, with the Fringe Festival and all, there's all kinds of different things that go on in, in Edmonton that I've always kind of found it maybe a little bit leaning more arts. It's a little, yeah, it just leans a little bit more left too, which is just yeah. nice for me growing up in Calgary. <laughs> you know, it's just like a little bit, it was just nice to take a little break, I think. Well, yeah. I, I felt like an idiot for years because I moved to Alberta, to Calgary specifically, about 11 years ago. And everyone I met was like, ah, Edmonton sucks. You don't need to go check that out. And I went one trip and went to the mall, did, you know, the tourist stuff. And then started hanging out there a bit more. I was like, man, this this place feels like a big city. There's something a little dirtier, like you said, less white collar. Um, and I don't know. I think I might like Edmonton better than oh, Calgary. Nice. I haven't lived there, but. Ooh, I can't pick, but... Well, you, you, we won't put you in that position. We are on video, though. I imagine you probably still have a shit ton of family and friends still in Calgary. Do they give you a, a hard time? Oh, always. Yeah. And, you know, well-deserved. As it should be. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, uh, it's the way things should be, so... So when you moved there, was, it, was there a part of the music scene that, like, intrigued you? Or you just felt it would be a better better fit for your, your career? Or? Oh, big time. I, well, I moved there for a partner, so it was okay. it was mostly for love um <laughs> but i yeah i started going to the empress like five or six years ago back when it was still open and i played a few shows there and i just fell in love with the community of people i just thought that i was really i was welcomed right away and i again i just felt like really really a part of it without having to try mm-hmm. not that i had to try in calgary or anything you know like that but it just it was a really weird instant fit so i definitely wanted to check that out a little bit more cool yeah, you're uh, you're for for a Cal- Calgarian. You're giving Edmonton some serious. I know, praise. jeez. It's good. It's <laughs> good. We should probably establish long. that uh, this is the podcast this week. Are we? Ro- oh, is it, this is we're going. You didn't know? Oh, sh- yes. We've been recording <laughs> since second one. Uh, Marielle Buckley is here, uh, just hours ahead of 
your show at Bo's here on stage. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a good time. And it's like, we should note, it's the middle of October. It's fucking terrifying. And we're on the patio. It's terrifying. With, it's beautiful like, and terrifying. I'm going to be, like, sweating like crazy because that sun's just hitting right. That's but not something you should have to... ever said on what? October 17th. No, Because I'm going to be sweating sitting outside in the sun, right? Like, I, I genuinely think that in my 11 years here, it snowed every September. Yeah. So we were just this weekend getting, like, Halloween decorations and shit up. And it's so great to do because, like, all the stakes that you got to push into the ground <laughs> to hold things down, like, just, like, butter. Just right in. Wow. So and nice. He goes, his house, <laughs> if you drive past it for Christmas or Halloween, is is a madhouse of in decorations. Red Deer? In Red Deer. Well, you, yeah. you should send it to me. I love I will to send you do a, the drive-by. I'll send you, you go, I'll, I'll send you go hard as hell for Halloween, too, right? I mean, there's definitely people that go harder, for sure. But, no, we've got some. And the thing that's great is we've got an instant built-in Halloween decoration. We've got this crab apple tree. Yes. And, again, same thing. They're not, like, as rotted as they normally would be this time of year. But, oh. eventually, they just drop and splat. So, you've got this red, fleshy goo all over all the decorations. Yeah. Outstanding. Perfect. Do you clean that stuff off every year? Hell no. Oh, that's... nice. So they all smell like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just all fermented apples. It's half the beauty, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't, like, uh, there's got to be a crab apple section of the craft beer game, right? I keep trying every, I like, I'm like, guys, I got this whole tree. We got, like, so we do make, like, some juices and liqueurs and shit with it. But you do at home. At home, yeah. Oh, shit. But we've, uh, I've talked to so many craft breweries. I'm like, there's got to be a market for some crab apple shit here. And I've, like, uh, I'll, I'll supply it. Just put my picture on the can. That's all. Well, yeah, you'd think cideries be all over for that. For a cidery or yeah, something? That's a crab good point. apple? Yeah, yeah a cidery. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, speaking of craft beer, we are hanging out with our friend Sawback Brewing. We've never done, like, any of our sponsorship this is stuff like a live during the interview. Intro. So. Sick. There you go. Sawback Brewing. And Go if Services you're drinker, Inc. You could try some yeah. Sawback tonight. Oh, Sawback has they have <laughs> a uh, what? Do you have a style type of beer that you prefer over anything else? We like the Crushables, but I'm, okay. I do like a good Pilsner or a Pale also. Okay, okay. Yeah. so the uh, Sawback does a gig beer, which I'm sure you'll probably, um, and it's usually either a hazy blonde or a Pilsner. So oh, Crushable. they swap between. They swap between. Oh, I didn't know that. Either or, yeah. Learn it. something new every day. Uh, and a big thanks to Go Services Inc. and our friends at Both Bar and Stage. They also yes, help us out here too. Which uh, apparently you're no. You're in a stranger to. I love it here. You've seen this place grow. Is there something you look forward to that you know you're going to Bose and you know there's going to be maybe something special back in the green room? I mean, or... everything is very special. <laughs> it's like when, when I was still, I mean, I'm still a nobody, but when I first played here and was definitely more of a nobody, it was like top-notch hospitality. Yeah. You know, it's pretty great and pretty, like, pretty validating to have one of those gigs once in a while, even if you are just, like, the random local. So yeah. it's pretty sweet that a venue wants to do that for artists. Yeah. And you get to go home tonight, right? Fuck yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. You could say fuck. Oh. What a beautiful what a beautiful day. Come play a show. And so you put out your new album t just over two months ago now. That's right, yeah. August 12th, I think. Correct. How are you feeling about it? Really good. It's one of those things, though. It's like it's got to be out for a bit, and it just feels I'm in that sort of like, I don't know, kind of. It's on the charts, I think, and yeah. that's great. But uh, it's just a record. We're just trying to play the songs, get it out there, you know. Yeah. And you were, was this record at all delayed? over the last couple of years or are we kind of out of that yeah certainly a little bit uh we just tried to record it about six times mm -hmm. so that was delayed more than anything else but the release was pretty on track and and i'm glad that it's out now so that we can yeah we can work it some more why were you recording it so many times well i, I really wanted to do everything live off the floor that's yeah. like kind of my vibe for when i make a record uh and you know you guys know it's like you don't want to compromise um something you're doing just just to have it done mm -hmm. so i i pushed back a few times just to make sure that we could all be in the same room when it was safe to do so and yeah. we were able to do that in september of 2021 okay so sweet. so it wasn't a perfectionist thing it was just you had a vision and it was wasn't easy to accomplish at first yeah like i you know we had i think six or seven players uh live in the room making the songs and so to do that you know there's a certain level of like you gotta all be there for the whole time yeah yeah, so I really wanted to get it done like that. I think the energy on a record that's cut like that is just different than if you're comping all the parts after the fact. Yeah, that's interesting. Where did you record it? We did it in Calgary at the NMC there. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Was that Very nice. in, the bu in the bus, like the Stones? No, part? in uh, Control Room B okay. upstairs, but we used all the synths. They have like a crazy synth collection. So we were in there every day diddling around. That's amazing. They've got like, one, uh, from what I remember, and I, I haven't been... I don't even know if I've seen been inside the new one, but they've got like a sick board too, right? Like legendary. Oh man, they've got a few like crazy consoles. The I think I went through like a Neve something. Yeah. Just mm. nuts. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Well, that would have been. So, how long was the recording? We took 12 days and did like kind of one song a day. Mm -hmm. 
front to back uh, with all with everything done. So then by the end of the 12 days, the record was just done. It was just ready to go to mastering, which that's was awesome. Sick. Yeah, it was fun. It, that's kind of what we wanted to do. So well, that's amazing. And so, was that had you recorded them all? And then like so you said you went through it a few times. Did you have it recorded? Was it like post production stuff that you went through a few times to get it ready, or just no? I mean, we I did some vocal doubling, so yeah. I went and sang most of the parts again, but all of the original vocal tracks almost are live and then everything else is live. So we b did barely any comping after the fact, maybe a couple synth parts. But. And you do the same process again? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. there's something to be, you can, like I feel that you can definitely tell the difference in something recorded live off the floor as opposed to it being recorded in parts over here and over there and just kind of, I, it definitely has a, a feel to it. Yeah. It's got a vibe and like an yeah. energy and you know, just, I just think too, you can overthink it for so long if you keep going back for comps. And so for me, yeah. it's just like, I hope I'm going to make like 20 records or more in my career so like why you know wait yeah. which one are we on now three three right <laughs> you've got lots of time yeah, i got tons of time you hopefully. got lots of time and then so we uh uh pete still works for the broadcast company that runs wild in calgary very cool so what was your ex when was the wild uh, or the peak performance project that you won 2019 okay so right before they probably stopped doing that uh, they no, they, they did no, one they, more year. They did after at least that. one more yeah, year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I've always been curious, as an artist, you go through rounds in that process, right? Yeah, like there's a submission round, and then I think they pick twelve, mm -hmm. and then you do a year of the program, and then they pick three. Right. Yeah. And what would like? Did it feel very competitive, or? Um, I think it probably could have, but I'm just not naturally like I, I don't really want to do that with other artists. Yeah. It's like I'll do it with myself because okay. it's like. It's just not fruitful to think of other artists as your con competition because yeah. it's it's so subjective, right? It's like objectively, I might not or really like what someone does, but trying to measure that's not my job. That's the judges and whoever else. I just tried to do my best. But so and, on the on that same topic, like, were you when you were down to that final three, were you like, oh, yeah, I got this? No, fuck. Like no, the definitely not. Opposite? No, I, I always try not to go in with that. I, okay, I try to okay. keep expectations in the basement so I can always be really excited. So you're good you're happens. you're not like you're not optimistic about it. No, I just was like realistic. Like I worked really hard. I hope that my effort shows. And and either way, I won some money, so I didn't really care. I was yeah. just pumped that I had a bit of cash. Yeah. Okay. All right. We should join that project we should sometime. Get into that. Uh, and you were um, <laughs> some of the other people in there. So you're born and raised Calgarian, right? City girl, pretty well through yeah, and through. Totally. So and I know that you were, you know, the, some of the other people that were in that were like, I know Mariah was from Stavely and the Blake Reed band from Carstairs. So did you feel different going against more kind of like I guess rural contemporaries in a country kind of competition? Did that plan to it? No, not at all. Not I at mean, all? realistically, like the country scene is just full of city freaks anyway. <laughs> I think the, the rural <laughs> thing is cool and like it definitely can be a part of the identity. But yeah, I wasn't yeah. worried about it. It's not what I sing about anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and did you, so did you, everybody got along? Like it was so oh, good. Oh, totally. Camaraderie. Yeah. Great. Did crew. you, was Jason Velo with, in Blake Reed's band? Was he, he, he was, he did get it. Okay. I love that guy. Okay. So I went to, I went to school with Jason. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, did he, does he still gleek? Do we all know? Oh what yeah. Oh that? yeah. What does that mean? Does he still does it? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God. All day, all I've, night. All through high what school, is it? it's like you can, you, like you just spit, you spray your spit oh, under your tongue. Oh yes. Like a, yes. I can't believe thirty years later he's still fucking doing that. He's got a lot of gross games. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He's got a lot of good tour games that are unmenschable. <laughs> that, and you went, you went to like what high school? High school. Yeah. Oh. His, his dad was our band teacher all oh, through cool. high school, and uh, yeah. That makes sense. So I saw that he was there the same time as you. Not that he can't possibly still pull that shit off, but. Interesting. Okay, good. On one hand, good for not growing up. Oh, he's a freak and I love him. <laughs> he is. <laughs> um, so where does, the, where does the music come from? You got a musical family. I know your brother plays music, right? Yep, totally. That's Parents? pretty much it. My, dad's, my dad was musical. He's got family that do like classical stuff on the East Coast. But oh, cool. really it was just me and Tim listened to lots of records when we were kids and got into it when we were kind of in our 20s so and were you both listening to a lot of country western then or like no no i think i was more into like the 2000s pop yeah punk you know sort of stuff and then definitely really into rap as i think a lot of white prairie kids yeah. were <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> tim really liked the hip and like that pearl jam kind of because he's yeah. a bit older than i am and then we didn't get into country until i was already you know in my late teens and huh. it just grabbed you or what well, at first, no. Like, I hated country, but Neil Young was probably my, like, gateway drug to folk, then to country, right? Because he has such a crazy catalog and makes so many different kinds of songs that when I heard he had a little folk thing, I was like, oh, I could I could get on board with this. Which I guess, and I'm not, I'm definitely not um, 
characterizing your music as, as like full country like how would you if someone asks you oh you play music what do you play what is your answer i usually just say like country adjacent okay you know, alt, alt country doesn't work no i mean you all of it good? works it's i don't all... care we were talking about this yeah. the other day right like what is the definition of that and like how far back um are we reaching for needing to differentiate the different genres of country because in my opinion as someone who's not too familiar with the genre i've only really noticed it in the last 10 years but you were saying that 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 was still happening in the early 90s too right yeah well it's funny that actually what introduced me to you was uh you and the brothers landreth did the mm. vince gill cover oh that's right and yeah. that was my first introduction to you which that cover is amazing but i he remember too. um nice. working country radio in the in the mid 90s i remember people saying vince gill's not country it's contemporary <laughs> pop is what, like right really? okay would, okay so that whole thing of that's not country that's not anything new by any stretch. No, yeah. and even in the 70s, that's it, like what made Willie through. leave exactly. Nashville. Exactly. Which, you know, oh, is it? Oh, okay. Country. Yeah, they went back to do a bunch of acid in Texas and write what they wanted to write. Yeah. So yeah. It's always been a bit of a split, you know? It is It is another, like I was working that country station in Drayton Valley for a few years, and, and I, I didn't think about it until the other day, but, and I know drugs were involved in country music all the way back when. Have but you like, heard of Waylon Jennings? Yes, but like it wasn't as... <laughs> glamorized as other music genres no but again for the outlaws who wanted a little yeah, bit more they need, of that yeah, separation they, they, right. that, that was kind of well known then like i mean honestly you go back to like whalen and george jones those guys are probably out drinking out drug most of the like aerosmith and zeppelin guys right like absolutely yeah and could just really put them back it's very impressive now <laughs> with all the like vegan and healthy musicians <laughs> i tour with now i'm like we could never do it <laughs> you uh you sing about substances a lot yeah um is that something is that life experience or totally yeah no i still i still drink in you know moderate moderation and i, I smoke weed i like weed a lot yeah but i i used to put uh i used to do some coke in my 20s and stuff which i think a lot of prairie kids can relate to and i just that just had a bad hold on me in my 20s for a little bit but i don't do that anymore and uh, and and just like is is there any catharsis in singing about it? Totally, yeah. Well, I think again, like I think uh, if you're kind of from the rural middle or like rural city middle class yeah. white family, I think that's like a pretty common story. Yeah. So really, I you know I was just trying to tell my story, but a lot of people seem to relate to it. Yeah, that's good. That I mean, I I think more and more people uh, relate to it just in the way that they're willing to admit it. Totally, yeah. You know what I mean? And do you think, obviously, those uh, a lot of those tales play a pretty big role in a lot of the songs on this album? Do you think continuing moving forward, you'll always continue to kind of draw back to those days? or? Uh, I mean, it, I guess it depends where I'm at. Uh, certainly, I like to use my own stuff as like um, as a catalyst to get writing, just because I that's sort of just my, I don't want to call it brand, but like the, you know, ruthless self-examination seems to be part of my stuff. So I probably will keep calling back to that until I've forgiven myself. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I was talking to or chatting with a Redditor. Oh, what do we have here? Special delivery? Look at that. Hidden track Guys, Citra Lager. Take care of you. Did you bring that with yourself? or? No, I bet it's from the green. <laughs> <laughs> My bass player just make it. Sure what a I... nice guy. What a nice guy. <laughs> He's a good man. Um, I was on the Red Deer subreddit, which is not a very lively place, but, you know, kind of telling people to come to the show tonight. And someone who unfortunately couldn't make it said that they saw you open for Orville. Yeah. When was that? Oh. <sighs> month is it it was uh like mi like beginning of august oh, right, was this for edmonton year? folk fest yeah oh, okay up in edmonton hometown show no in calgary uh two nights at the palace oh right yeah. i forgot about that how like what so what was that experience like it was super cool yeah he um it was it was a really good bill pairing yeah um and i i couldn't believe how young the crowd was yeah like that to mm -hmm. me was so cool and mind-blowing that like you know, he just had all these young people there, all these young alt people that were really into, you know, what he does is actually oddly pretty traditional in a lot Very of ways. Very much so, yeah. yeah. So it was really cool to see people grabbing onto it. And uh, yeah, it was a great, they were two great shows. You yeah. know, it's it's interesting that what I've noticed of, you know, the genre right now is it does seem to be attracting a really younger demo. Like I know even guys like Coulter Wall, mm. uh, Charlie Crockett, uh, Zach Bryan. I had a, a buddy's kid who got me into Zach Bryan this summer, who was in his early 20s. Oh, and that's amazing. not anything I would ever have assumed an early 20s something would listen to, but that's, it's really attracting a young audience right now, which I think is great because there's room to grow. Speaking of Charlie Crockett, I had a buddy call me today, said, oh yeah, I might go see him in Detroit. He lives outside of Toronto. I might go see him in Detroit in November. I was like, oh, okay. It's like, you know, cause he's not gonna get into Canada. 
he, does, he doesn't tour in the in the country, I guess, because he's a felon. Yeah. Did you know that? Yes. So I you, did not know that. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you get a DUI or something? That's uh, like I think I, I believe it was all marijuana related because oh, he did. Really? I, if so I remember weak. correctly oh, in his so story, weak. it's very Come weak. On. Very weak. I, I do remember. I think he had worked on a pot farm in California somewhere. And I think it stemed from that, if I'm remembering the story correctly. Who hasn't worked on a pot farm in California? Doing the Lord's work. Bring him up here. That's so... That means Canadian. The Canadian border services are stopping them from, from entering the country, right? Yeah, if you've got an illegal possession of some kind on you, you won't be able to get. I trust me. I've got friends from Canada that can't get into the U.S. for some pretty chintzy shit. I mean, that much I kind of understand, but like, I don't know. Just and you would think, there's, I, I, honestly, there's probably a shit ton of paperwork. Yeah, to try that's to get true. God, over I'm it sure. and around it. So yeah, it's I think not you have worth to be pardoned. The... I have a few like musician friends that can't come up here also, and it's like such a fucking mountain of. Nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now you're used to filling out mountains of paperwork, right? Like you grind the. Do you grind the grant game pretty hard? I grind pretty hard. Yeah, I'm sort of uh, re-entering being self-managed in the last month here. So okay. So I'm grinding pretty hard right now, and, and I'm okay with that. I've kind of done that for a lot of my career. Right. How are you? Uh, so how are you feeling about self-management? It's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, are you organized? I'm pretty organized. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I would love to be more organized in general but I, yeah it's uh it's getting to the point where certainly some help would be nice but i've got a label that's helping me as well so that's nice what label is that birthday cake out of winnipeg birthday cake yeah. right yes yes that's yes. our token little bit of winnipeg love there we go we all like there's, man we've I there's so winnipeg. much from winnipeg right we like uh, probably a we third or more of our podcasts have been winnipeg artists or somehow winnipeg's come out in some way shape or form oh, yeah. golden boy golden for sure begonia oh begonia just there Love from her. um sweet alibi sweet alibi like beautiful it just doesn't and stop and even we had like uh, uh brad roberts from crash test dummies biff naked we had her on and she's got some winnipeg experience so cool. it's winnipeg is it's insane it's stacked yeah, yeah. That, like it's just such a talented and city now the brothers landreth are behind the birthday cake records they is are it, yeah it's, it's and their so label? begonia's on there too right um yeah, so they, they signed me back in April, which was awesome, because I love those guys. So they signed serious talent. Well, I mean, they sign they sign whoever's got a record, I guess. That's okay. <laughs> um, going back to that Project Wild, it was a whole year. Did you learn any management stuff in during that time at all? Did that get covered? Oh, certainly, yeah. I mean, I think, too, that I had a, not a, a leg up, but I, I'd done so much of that stuff beforehand, and I'd been touring so extensively kind of before that project that I had lots under my belt already. So yeah. it was nice to cover some of the other stuff, but a lot of the like talent buying and uh, and kind of basic management stuff I was pretty comfortable with already. Not totally left in the dark. No, no. And that stuff I, weirdly comes pretty easily to me because like I just want to I just want to play. Right. So I'm pretty OK with doing any kind of work it takes to play. Yeah. 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 Um, did you like? Do you look to your brother because he's older than you, right? Do you totally, look to him yeah. for for tips and tricks? Oh yeah, and I mean, you know, we do such different things. Yeah. And he wants to work. Uh, I mean, he wants to work sort of a different circuit than I do too. So yeah. we, I think, we try and help each other out when we can, for sure. And he, do you guys jam together ever? Yeah, we do like a little duo project. Usually, like once a year, we do five or six shows. Like I think oh, in December sweet. this year, we're doing a little little run. So it's really fun to to do that. That's amazing. Yeah, little that, sibling hang. Yeah, yeah. that sounds. Does it ever get? Is there ever tension? No, no. It, like, he's, like, eight years older than me, <laughs> and we're just, yeah, we get along really well. Plus, we don't hang out that much, so it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I think I, I read one of the stories that you'd kind of stolen some tragically hip CDs from your brother. Stolen. Early on. And that's what kind of led. So we're also, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, we're here on October 17th, which is the five-year anniversary of Gord's passing. So I'm curious, which uh, which hip songs did you gravitate towards oh my when God. you first grabbed those albums? So many. I'm like a huge hip fan, huge Gord fan. I really liked uh, that In Violet Light record that had like the darkest one and uh, It's a Good Life If You Don't Weaken. I really like Phantom Power. It's got a bunch of great tracks. Grace, or sorry, uh, Day for Night is probably my favorite record, and Trouble at the Hen House as well. Yeah, so I mean, speaking all, my language, all <laughs> of those records just yeah, they all sound so freaking good still. Yeah, and it's the um, why can't I think of it? Is it We Are We Are the Fire? It was one of the last ones. It had Morning Moon. It opened with Morning Moon. That saw the hip kind of delve into a little bit more kind of Americana, alt yes. countryish kind of yes. stuff too. We Are the Same yes. is the album. We Are the Same. That's probably top three for me as well. Oh, yeah. Three, yeah. I didn't want to hijack this whole podcast and just talk about Gordon the Hip the whole time, but, but he's the best. maybe we'll have to do that another time. 100%. I mean, there, if there's a day for it, it would be, <laughs> it would today. be today. You Have you been to the studio? Never. No. No, I've uh, I've only, I saw them about 13 times when, like, they came to Calgary every time Holy we went. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. But I never have been to the, the bath studio and seen any of that. Hopefully huh. one day. How many times have you seen them? 
21, I think, is what I had gotten to. He's but a bit it, older. But it's He's like, a bit older. Fine, fine. <laughs> and, and it was just like, because they were just, they'd always come around. But they was, I love them so much. It was one band that I'm like, I don't care if I just saw them six months ago. I'm going to go Same. S- see them again. Like, they like, they taught me what a live show should look like, you know? Mm. Once a year you come, you fill a stadium, and you put on the best fucking show. They do like two encores a night. Yeah. So much energy. It's, it's unfortunate because Gord will never get into the conversation of the greatest front man of all time just because, you know, he's so just known here. But name a more prolific frontman that engages the crowd with all of the dance moves and all the crazy stuff and the rants and the working things out. Like, there's, I, I don't think there's anybody that compares. No, I agree. There is no one. There is no one. So do you take, it's one thing um, I, I always took from, from Gord. See, we're turning it into the Gord podcast anyways. <laughs> but I just, I remember him saying, like, when he learned to make eye contact with the crowd, that's when the game changed. So... How are you with that? Oh, I'm and not things. there yet. Not there yet? No, no. no. God bless him. He was effortless at connecting with people, but yeah. I, I'm still learning. Yeah, I think uh, that's a confidence thing, I think, that sure. just comes with time and playing lots of gigs. Why but... don't you start small, small steps, put on glasses first, <laughs> oh. do the Mitch Hedberg where you're wearing sunglasses right. on stage because you're so fearful. So cool and scared is... of everyone. Yeah, well, that was, he wasn't being cool. He was just scared shitless. Yeah. <laughs> and then slowly you can take the glasses off and Get then just stare. You stare. I think... Patrick's making a play to be a manager here, I think, is what it might be. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. It's um, good he sounds like a manager. <laughs> I'm sitting here feeling sorry for myself that I never saw the hip, and I just realized that, uh, no, I've never seen the hip, but I did see Downey and the Sadies. Hmm. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I've also seen that. Incredible. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, where was that? Edmonton, I think. It was? Okay. Yeah. This was like 2014 or 13, I yeah. think, at the Pemberton Music Festival. Oh. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm not totally out of this. Uh, oh, that you was redeem, cool You redeem yourself a little bit. A little, just, just yeah. a touch, just a touch. <laughs> I even saw him with Dan Romano. Oh. Which was. Gord Downey? Yeah. What was he doing with him? He just sang a song uh, in Toronto with them. I can't remember what it was. It blew me away. Man, I can't wow. believe the week that Romano's had. Like, he was, he's been in California. Yep. He was on Tim Heidecker's Office Hours podcast. I know that was Which, crazy with the so Chapo cool. Trap House guys. Like oh it was like a dream parent. Like I just, yeah, I can't. I, I just, it feels like he's really. He is one of my stride. favorites still. Yeah, just yeah. such a great, talented musician who just can do it all. Like all back to the Attack and Black days. All or, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. a he's a great musician and songwriter, and he doesn't give a fuck what anybody wants him to do or thinks he should do. He just does it. That much is evident in 2020, or was it 2020 when he put out a new record every Friday, basically? Yeah, just for free. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Like he's got uh, you know some classic Romano records, and then he's got uh, a record with the drummer from Tool. Of all people, and yeah, it's yeah, wild. Why not? Wild shit. I tried to get him to make my buddy a guitar strap many years ago, but that did not happen because he also makes guitar straps. He's, yeah, it's very artistic. I yeah. think like does cool graphic design. And, yeah, yeah, fucking cool guy. Yeah, have you met him before? Uh, I opened for him a long time ago when I was very green, uh, and I briefly met him. I know his bass player a little bit, and his uh, one of his backup singers also just put out a really great record. Bri- Bria, is that it? Uh, no, that's or, she's over real Peck's. Oh, uh, um, Juliana. Really, yeah, 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 yeah. Her new record is that is really incredible. cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I know them a little bit, but um, g- can you see yourselves doing some sort of musical collaboration? Oh, I mean, I would love to. I don't know if he's uh, an accessible level anymore, but I would love to make a record with him. Yeah, he's for sure on my list. Yeah, I still, I still need to see that guy too. Oh my god. One of these days. Have you seen him? No. Face no. melting. We'll yeah, just so good. Yeah. You got any shows that you're looking forward to coming up beyond your own? <laughs> oh man. I would like, actually, I would really like to get out and see that Jason Isbell, Kathleen Edwards tour. I'm really excited that about that. Phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Is that s- coming around these parts? Yeah, no, there's a March 2nd, the date in Edmonton just got announced. Mm. So I think all the Alberta dates are coming down the pipe now, but that's going to be off the Did chain. you get your tickets yet? No, but I'm going to. I just missed him when we were in California earlier this summer. Right, he was yeah, playing. Yeah. I forget what the festival was, but it was a family trip and... I didn't know about it when no we got down No music there. right now. <laughs> Wasn't allowed to go to that one. So, you know, I will go. And that's he's an artist. I will go to both Edmonton and Calgary shows. Oh, man. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I'm going to have to get into Isbell, too. Uh, and you've got some exciting touring, too, like from here. So you finish Little Old Red Deer and a few of these other. And then Sweden is next? All, yeah, for all of November, we're in, in Sweden. Apparently, it's quite The whole dark. month? Yeah, yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. How many shows? I think 15. Oh, my wow. God. Yeah. I didn't know Sweden was that big. It's not, but I've got an agent who's in Scandinavia, and he builds by territory. So he's like, okay, we'll, we'll do Sweden, and now we're going to Sweden. Do you know any Swedish? I actually, I bought Duolingo about so a year ago. you've been working on it. I've been working on it, yeah. And how's that going? 
good. I know how to order a beer. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Order Important coffee, first. say thank you. I can say the boys. So I've pretty much got it. You're done. You can <laughs> converse with the entire country. <laughs> Basically. And over a month, you will. Oh, sure. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Sweden for a month. Oh, that's gonna they be love the country, man. Yeah, Scandinavia seems to love country music. Well, it just, I mean, and you've been to Europe a few times now, right? Just once. We just went with the Bros Landreth this September yeah. for the first time. Okay. Yeah. okay, so first time experience. How did you feel your um, art was, your content was was received really well yeah. yeah super nice people like really engaged crowds um throughout the uk and, and europe it was really cool to to see that and i think that would be great and especially going to sweden too like you know those people are showing up to because they're interested in learning about you yeah. right so it's not going to be a crowd that's just kind of casually there yeah they no. actually want to come in here and figure out what you're about yeah for sure no, they have a really visitor fun. from a faraway land yeah here for an entire month. Well, and they were saying too that like English songwriting is like a big thing for them because most people in the country genre in Europe try and sort of imitate that dialect or way of speaking or with the slang and whatever. Within their own language. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I think when they hear folks like, you know, people that are from here, it's like a cool, authentic experience yeah. for them. So people were seem, seem to be really excited about that. And just to bring Gord back into the conversation, I had a buddy that saw the hip play and I forget if it was Norway or Sweden, but it was over there. And I'm like, who would show up to see the hippo? He's like sold out. Yes. And I'm like, wow. But he said every Canadian from yeah, as far yeah. across Europe like as possible would out. come back and <laughs> fill up those shows. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's wild. It is nice. Um, and we've heard it for years now working on radio, but it just seems like Europe is a pretty uh, gracious place for Canadian bands to go, of any size. Very hospitable. Yeah. yeah. They just, they take it super seriously and they treat you like a, like a working pr professional, you know? It's yeah. really nice. Is there something, um, just on your short experience there last month, is there something that those venues, or we could adapt from those venues or those crowds? Well, I mean, Bose has it pretty locked in. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Everyone else, then. Everyone, yeah, not Bose. <laughs> uh, I think just, like, because in Canada we're so lucky because of the sort of vast arts funding, mm -hmm. there's a lot of great bands touring all the time. So the demand isn't as high because, you know, you can go see a great show any night of the week. So I think there's just a dedication to making time to go to shows and listen and yeah. you know be attentive and be engaged with live music as a culture. Yeah. Whereas I think here, because again, we have so much access to it, it's maybe not as, uh, not as important to some folks as it used to be. Mm -hmm. Imagine there are a lot of people there who want you to come back too. I think so, yeah. I mean, I hope so. So they show that. Well, yeah, I guess you'll find out. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll check back in with you yeah. in a little while and see if Sweden actually wants you back. Womp, womp. No, I'm sure they will. <laughs> she's she spent so much time on the language. She's going to fit right in. They're not even going to know she's not from Sweden. <laughs> yeah, come on now. <laughs> it, was, it is an official version of Duolingo. It's not like some pirated version. No, it's not like learn speak. It's or whatever. It's, yeah, it's the, the little bird. <laughs> Harasses me every day. I drive that app. is actually quite a lot of fun. It is. It's, it's great. It's also like if you're someone that likes to like you know, move up. Yeah, if you're totally. A bit, bit if you like to level up. Freak, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the, the language app for true gamers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> hilarious. I was deep into Duolingo for Italian cool. because uh, we had flights to Italy in April of 2020. And then I stopped learning Freak. Italian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I remember someone be like, no, nah, you'll be fine, man. I was like, dude, it's March and there's bodies piling the floors of Italian gonna, hospitals. Know, nobody knew it was going to go <laughs> as far as it did. So, no. And here we are. And here we are. Here we are. What time we got, Pete? Uh, what are we at? 4.10. Um, Pete's got a bit of a heart out. I got so a bit of a heart out, but I do want to, I, I love the fact, like, it's Mario Buckley and her band. Yeah. Let's talk, yeah, about, the, like let's talk about the band. Sure. So is it revolving nope. members? Is pretty it, you, consistent Pretty right consistent? Now. Okay, who have you got with you? Uh, so I've got a drummer out of Edmonton named Luke. Uh, Breitnader, he plays pretty much exclusively with me, I think. A couple other projects. Bass player is Curtis Cockrell from Manitoba, lives in Edmonton. He's in that band, The Denim Daddies. That's his mm -hmm. kind of main project. Uh, Ryan Funk, also from Winnipeg, uh, great musician, has toured lots, and he's in Edmonton now. Uh, he plays pedal steel and guitar. And then Matt Krause, uh, who plays kind of B3 piano and uh, and synth. And he was in a band called Altamida out at Edmonton mm -hmm. for a little yeah, while. Right. Yep. Yep. And now I think he's just playing with me. So I've I, these guys have kind of been like a three-year pretty consistent lineup. That's nice. That must feel good. It does. It's like I like that a lot. And I, I like, you know, working with people that are young and want to tour. And yeah. this, this iteration of the project is just perfect for that because everyone is, wants to get out there. A lot of trust on stage too. Totally, yeah. Like yeah. They, they learn the material and they crush it all the time. And it's, yeah, it's great. 
And how do you feel about the transition from the studio? Because, again, a little more synth heavy, a little more pop influence. Does it translate uh, totally. pretty easily to the stage? Totally. Yeah. yeah no, I, and that's also a focus when I make the record, you know, doing it live off the floor. Part of that is to is to be able to recreate it live because I think as much as, you know, you don't want it to be too similar to the record, it's also like why people go see you yeah. is if they like your record. So yep. it should sound a little bit like it. I was saying it's it's a very soothing record in my opinion. Oh, that's good. I, that's good. that's the word that came to mind this yeah. weekend because yeah. I've been listening to it quite a bit over the last well yeah about a month month and a half now. And yeah, it's just very soothing. Good. The storytelling is, and that's to me one of the prime things about country music is the storytelling. So the storytelling is. Thanks a lot, amazing. you guys. Yeah, it's really great. And you're gonna play a song or two from it tonight? I should. Yeah, I should think <laughs> yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Pete. Anything else? No, we're good. I'm looking forward to tonight. It's going to be awesome. Right on, All right. Man. Thank you so much for hanging out. Oh, Sorry about that guys. fly. That was a real the pain fucking in the fly ass. Is fucking fly. It felt like Winnebago, man. And just This fly is just constantly busting Mid-October, around Mid-October, those things are usually gone it's by Mike now. Mike Pence's but... fly. Back <laughs> <away>. <laughs> um, all right. You got to bounce? I got to bounce. All right. I'm just going well, to... We, we can... You want to rip an extra, intro? Outro? Outro out of here? Extra outro? Do you all need right. to get in there? Just hanging out. How's that beer? Delightful. Not our sponsorship beer. Sorry. <laughs> I should have told him. <laughs> it's all good, but it is a delightful beer here it, at Bo's Barn had, Stage. Oh, and it's got the CKUA. Oh. It's a CKUA. Oh, yeah. shit. I didn't notice that. Huh. All right. There you go. It fits. Which um, I did notice CKUA has been very supportive. Yeah, no obviously. kidding. Always. Yeah. Always. Yep. I'm very lucky. And do you, so I'm getting right back into things. Do you keep track of any of that stuff? I try to. It's all on the internet if I need it. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to hear about it, but I don't go looking for it. I yeah. think again, these are things I don't want to measure against the the art. It's like this yeah. is this yeah. is how I like to measure it. People coming to shows, liking the stuff, buying the merch, and face to face stuff. I uh, it, it it's both been bugging me, and I appreciate it as as a tool. But the whole pre save a single on Spotify, um, as someone who refuses to use <laughs> Spotify. I just signed up for Tidal, actually. Good yeah. for you, yeah. Because um, I was using Google Play Music for a long time because at one point they were giving the, mo- the most sense. Cash, yeah. <laughs> well, cash, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they switched to YouTube Music and so- somehow just fucking shot down in terms of, I think it's like point zero 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 eight seven cents a stream or something. So I decided to sign up for Tidal. I'm trying a free trial right now because they give the most. And uh, but what what do you do if you don't have Spotify and you need pre saves? That's an important metric, right? Is that is Spotify uh, the only one that does pre saves? They're becoming so. less important. I feel like okay, because good. Huh. I think they realized through the pandemic when everyone was on their phone twenty four seven, pre save numbers just tanked because oh, okay. like nobody wants to fucking do shit on their phone more than they have to. Yeah. So now I think Even a lot one, of one extra button, one extra. Well, tap. so I think now the 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 rule is just like do it the day before, see if it helps. It's, I mean, all metrics are good metrics, but, like, I think they're becoming less important in the grand scheme. It's always seemed, like, honestly, it's always seemed a little sketchy to me because you have to, like, you have to link your Spotify to whatever it is that's, and I just, I've never trusted it. You don't pre-save? I don't pre-save, no, sorry. Well, this is what I mean. It's like, you know, you might get a few. I mean, I do it anyway. I think we all have to do it, the, you know, the whatever, whatever's yeah. expected. But, no, I think it's, uh, I, I mean, I hope it's becoming less important. If it was, important. like, honestly, if it was just going in, and I'd love to, but if it was just going in and hitting a button to pre-save... Done. Deal. But it's always uh, enter your email address oh, or I didn't link know your that. account. They don't even make or... it easy. God damn it. There's there's certain things I think that can be done in this industry very quickly, very easily, that could make things a bit, bit smoother. But mm-hmm. anyways. Uh, that's our... Enjoy self-management. <laughs> no, <fuck. laughs> and that's our outro. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, is that our outro? Yeah, well, thanks, Sawback Brewing Company, Go Services, Inc., Bose Bar and Stage. Patrick and Mariel Buck- Buckley. Mariel. Buck. Box. I didn't get to say box. I didn't use box it's once, okay. and it's a fucking great nickname. It's okay. When are we back, Patrick? Wednesday? Wednesday. The Road the Stage is produced by Ryan Cooley and Riley Sir Yin at the Communal Creative Studios in Red Deer, Alberta. In partnership with Go Services Inc., Sawback Brewing Co., Tourism Red Deer, and Bose Bar and Stage.